Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So that's how you roughly say it. Now let's get into the, you know, what you can take away from this remembrance, this saying that you uh, would say in the prayer as you're starting the prayers. Allahu Akbar. And then we'll go into the details of how you actually pronounce it and the different words and syllables that are involved into it. So this means that Allah is the greatest. He's above and beyond everything and everyone else. So especially, you know, we are worried and concerned about so many different things. We are planning about okay, how I'm going to do this. I need to make this call. I need to write this email. I need to read this. I need to prepare this balance sheet. Whatever it is, I have exam coming up. This should actually help us reset our priorities, our concerns, and our focus to remember that, look, at the end of the day, what really and the one who really, really matters is, is Allah approving of me? Is Allah happy with me? Is Allah pleased with me? How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judge me? And how am I in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as opposed to everyone else? And also to remember that all success, all ideas, all inspiration, um, all you know, successful sales, leads, everything is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Allah facilitates it for me, nobody can stop it. And if everybody else plans against me and wants to stop me from achieving something and Allah wants me to have this, I will always, always have, have it. And none can defeat the uh, plan and the, uh, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, when you when you think about these things and as you start your prayers, it will really, really help you, uh, especially during the prayers. So instead of thinking and planning about what you will be doing, you'll be asking Allah to help and support you in whatever affairs, whatever concerns that you have got. And then uh, hopefully, inshallah, with the will of Allah, it will continue after the prayers as well. Now, let's get into the details of how it's said. So typically, you will see it, you know, written like this in transliteration, which is good. You know, it's kind of covering uh, and protecting and preserving the Arabic words. But when it comes to um, prayers or, or reciting or saying it, I found that breaking it down like this would help. And we would use, definitely we would use some sort of conventions as well. And I'll explain what this is. So hopefully, you know, you might want to take this and write it down in your notepad or in your diary or phone or what have you. You can change it if it helps you pronounce it better. So the first syllable is al, very simple, al. Okay, now next one, you can see I'm, I'm using a uppercase L, capital L. The reason being is that I want to uh, help you remember that you want to make it a bit heavier. So this L was the regular light one, L, and now I want you to make it a bit heavier. So it's like law, law, right? So instead of it being la, it's law. Okay, so don't worry about a lot of details, but just try to make it heavier than before. Now, why do I have another A here? Because it's, uh, it's longer than la. So I'm not saying law, I'm saying law. So it's a bit, uh, so if you think about like, a, you know, uh, one A as one second or one count, now it's a bit longer. It's a law. Okay, I know there's a few uh, information and details here, but as you practice and just focus on one, don't think about the whole page that you have to memorize or cover. Just think about the one line at a time. And as you master it, then we'll move on to this uh, other one. And then you say, who, ak, baru. So now technically speaking, I can make it capital R as well to show it's heavier as well. So, Allahu ak, baru. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, let it me let me know if uh, there's any questions or anything that we can improve. So let's work on that, and then in the next one we'll get the next one, inshallah. Salam.